This episode of Going Postal is brought to you by Rampant Design Tools with 14 new products just out in time for NAB, including drag and drop natural flares, organic lens reflections, camera shake presets, and new flash transitions drag and drop for Final Cut 10, film leaks, film effects, style mats, muzzle flashes, and a whole bunch more. Use the code NAB2016 at checkout to get 60% off the regular price for each of these plugins between now and April 22nd. For more information, go to rampantdesigntools.com. Now, are you sitting comfortably? Good. Then we'll begin. I have a feeling we're not in Kansas anymore. I want the truth! Spoilers! Sally me, dream. Somebody get this big walking carpet out of my way. Here we go. They're here. Host. Production and pop culture. Don't get too proud of this technological terror you've constructed. This is Going Postal. And welcome aboard. It's our special pre NAB edition. We are back at Going Postal. I'm Adam Bedford. The band's back together. Ben Barden and Monica Daniel. Hello. We haven't seen you guys in ages. Hello. I know it's been way too long. I know. Way too long. But the good news is it's that time of the year where we all get together, talk tech, and get pissed. Yeah, in the Australian and English sense. <laughs> not the angry American sense. No, not the angry American sense at all. No, it's uh, it's almost NAB time. That's what this uh, edition of Going Postal is all about. What's happening at NAB this year? What can you expect to find? If you're heading out there, some cool tips and some cool events on and off the strip that you might want to check out. Now, guys, all I'm hearing is VR and HDR. That seems to be the buzzwords this year. Would you agree or disagree? Yeah, that's I, I would agree. HDR is incredibly interesting. I've seen an awful lot of demos on that at IBC last year, and it is amazing. And as an enhancement to the, the viewer watching content, I would say it's it's more of a step than uh, 4K was from 1080. I, uh, that's huge. That's really exciting. And VR is just a gimmicky pile of shit. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I'm I'm one of the uh, VR skeptics as well, and there seems to be um, panels and seminars and sessions all about VR, and um, I don't know what they could possibly cover in that many sessions that would be relevant or unique enough from each other, but we will see. All the conferences seem to have their own little um, session on VR. The difference is, like, VR has come and gone, like, for the last 20 years. It comes in waves. I remember seeing VR headsets in the 90s. And, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and then it disappears. I think what's different now is that you can get a... I saw it in Best Buy the other day. You can get a 360 VR camera that shoots 4K for f under 500 bucks. I think it is. It is for the masses this time, and it's always... It's never really got past that... Uh kind of concept stage before has it it's always been one of these things that seems to be just around the corner and, and hasn't but now all this stuff's around and it's cheap yeah yeah it's 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 going to be it's going to be doing the rounds it's going to be that annoying footage like gopro stuff that's just everywhere <laughs> we saw a post on the web today about someone actually turning vr into a sex suit so we, we knew it was uh, only a matter of time before porn that was gross hands, hands on this so to speak well, no no well I, i've got close your ears if you were grossed out by that monica when was we were in i wasn't grossed out i just it looked painful it, <laughs> it looked like, like he's been kicked it in the looked nuts like a torture device <laughs> it, it didn't look great for those who didn't see it yeah basically he was wearing an all white suit kind of like the stig from top gear but without the the crash helmet he was wearing a vr headset uh with a he had like, something on his other helmet <laughs> and he was wearing what was he wearing he was wearing like a, a pair of boobs on robot arms or something or other and something that would keep smacking him in the groin it's supposed to be liking it but all i could see was like getting kicked in the nuts every five seconds but yeah it, it looked it looked hot i give it a go then <laughs> i think we just scored a halloween costume for this year <laughs> <laughs> the, the, just but on, on that same uh the subject of this whole you know porn always drives technology in the video sphere or has done before with the old vhs and beat them out and all that kind of stuff going on the um when we were in IBC, there was a, a, a setup where they got a 360 camera remotely set up somewhere else in the on the show floor, and then they had this VR viewing booth. So you put the headset on, and then you, as you rotated around, you were looking around the booth. And Billy, who uh, we all know from um, Blindspot Gear, the, the Scottish guy who makes the lights, 
Right. Always in the kilt. Yes. He comes up and goes, I looked at it and all I was thinking was, can you imagine people are putting that on for the first time and if the actual scene is set, the camera's set in the middle of a bukkake. <laughs> And everywhere you turn, there's just... <laughs> oh, oh, no, no, no. See, some things... Yeah. And every time I've seen any VR stuff, that's all that comes into my head now. Yeah, that's just gross. <laughs> no, okay, that's grosser than the suit. So getting off getting off the whole porn drives well, technology... I, 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 um, because I'm, I'm only going on the weekend because I actually have to work the rest of the week. There is one session that... Uh, it's the only thing I really care about VR is... What what is gonna engage me beyond like you know beyond thirty seconds of like ooh this is so cool and because I've I've actually tried on I forget which device headset thing it was but I was I was interested for thirty seconds and then I was over it um, the future of cinema conference which I believe is a new conference this year on s- yeah wait what day is this hold on 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 Sunday, the Future of Cinema Conference has a session called Building Worlds, Cinematic Storytelling in VR and AR. And that's all I care about. What can you what is gonna be different about this cycle of VR? Is it gonna be cinematic? Is it gonna engage me in a new type of storytelling? Or is it just gonna be, you know, for video games and these little niche, weird little bukkake fantasies that Ben has? <laughs> <laughs> So you and Motorblock to be Bukaki on a Ducati. Nice. That was very good. Yeah. It's Say that like three that. times fast. Bukaki on a Ducati. <laughs> yeah, fuck. On a, on a non, non-techy non note, uh, the Future of Cinema Conference. Um, also, what, what seems to have begun last year with the Gender Gap panel, they have a panel called How to Increase Diversity in the Future of Cinema, which I think just is talking about just the the subject matter of trying to increase the diversity in all aspects of of uh, filmmaking, which I think is a big step in this industry. It's it's been a long time coming, and I'm glad it's finally starting to happen because that's not just the only events uh, happening at NAB to do with this, isn't there? Uh, there's a, a thing. Isn't it called Gals and Gear? Yes, there's one called Gals and Gear. Where, from what I understand, it's um, it's it's not. It's not going to discuss the the issue uh, so straightforward and head on like this other diversity panel. What it is is it's going to have women talking about their crafts with well, you know whatever aspect in filmmaking they're a part of, and they just happen to be women. Just to highlight the fact that you know there are women experts out there in in. Um, in the field absolutely so if you want to catch that tuesday morning from 9 to 10 a.m it's in the central lobby it's right where all the food is you can't miss it and it's also going to be live streamed if you can't be there moving on with our pre-nab edition i know we're jumping back and forth but let's go back to saturday because that's when avid has their uh, their big event it's across two days it's the avid connect uh i'm just looking at some of the tracks there's uh, there's a whole track on getting your career started monica um yeah, you know, it's like tips and tricks from editors and just, you know, how, how you navigate your career. And they it's not just like editing. It's about, you know, people who want to work in music or they want to be trainers. They have certification courses happening. And so it's uh, – and producers as well. There's something called Practical Advice for Independent Producers. And it's a panel discussion with um, professionals just to – to give advice to people in the audience on how how to make their careers uh, advance and uh, have a successful career. Uh, some of the other tracks include uh, refining your craft, uh, the technology of media, uh, the business of media, which is not often done in a in a conference like this. It's usually all about the the software and using the software. It's show business. It's a business, so it's great that they're covering that and how you can use avid there and uh future vision so it's like there's so much to do what are you gonna um, do monica well i uh you know our 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 friend and buddy scott simmons is actually teaching one of the sessions it's a tip, tips and tricks session for avid so i was thinking of going to that and uh i i promise i won't uh heckle him maybe um, yeah, and yeah, I was well, thinking about... A, don't make promises you can't keep. <laughs> There's also one called Advanced Mixing Workflows and Audio Posts. And the trick to, 
you know, trying to figure out what session you want to go to is don't do it just based on the title. So what they're going to be talking about in this mixing workflows and audio post is how they made the Star Wars Force Awakens trailer. And that's something I'd really be interested in seeing because I may have seen the trailer once or twice or 20 times. So it'd be neat to see how they put that together. Go to avidcustomerassociation.com to find out more about Avid Connect. Uh, So if you're in town over the weekend before NAB and you're an avid, avid user, see what I did there? (laughs) That Uh, was nice. Very nice, yeah. (laughs) You could could definitely check this out and benefit indeed. Um, So let's move on. Okay, that's Saturday and Sunday pretty much taken care of. Uh, In terms of parties... Not much going on uh, on Sunday night. If you're a colorist, there's the uh, the colorist mixer that's happening at the Rock House Bar at the Venetian Hotel, sponsored by Black Magic Design. Uh, you could find out more about that if you're a colorist or you like to color things. Um, go to coloristmixer. Or you just like using crayons. Uh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> that would be so good to turn up that with a coloring book, wouldn't it? <laughs> but it's a colorist mixer. I want a color. <laughs> Um, uh, you can get to oh in fact it might be even sold it sells out, out add, pretty add quickly to the wait list. yeah but you can probably crash <laughs> uh, it's it's fifteen dollars to get in so if you know somebody who's going try and blag a ticket off them um, and there's also the uh, on Sunday night there's the it's combined the avid editors of Facebook and post chat meetup at O'Shea's because post chat meetup wasn't going to happen and all of a sudden it did. Yeah, it's a meetup. It it used to be just solely uh, post chat, and I think it's around seven o'clock at O'Shea's. Um, it's by the is it by the link? Yeah, by that giant Ferris wheel. It's pretty much standing room only. You're standing in the middle of a courtyard, uh, like a public walkway, just drinking and talking, which is great. But don't be expecting a whole thing. Yeah, it's just a very yeah, important I like that normal one. meetup, just, you know, after a day of conference sessions and all that, it's just nice to just relax and kind of an informal setting. Yeah, you end up talking to so many people. I had a great time last year. Lost my voice by the end of it, I think. Matt, I, I suffer through the whole of this thing. I, I'm traveling, my journey to NAB takes me nine time zones, I think. I am I am screwed from the day I get there until the day I leave is just about when I uh, when I start to get over it. When you're sober, and the, right? and the, yeah. Well, that, to be honest, I think the, the the massive amount of drinking that happens from the moment I get <laughs> off the plane. I have noticed in past years you're not as not so grumpy at NAB. I think that's is it the alcohol. This is all an act for the radio show. <laughs> I'm really a very sunny personality. No, no, not that much of an act. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, someone sleeping on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> and that would be Ben. <laughs> All right, we're moving on. Uh, okay, so that's pretty much what's ha- happening for Sunday at NAB. Okay, let's move on to Monday. That's when things really start to happen at NAB. It's the big day. It's a pandemonium for the first few hours. Everyone's trying to get into the show. Uh, oh, it's chaos. It, it, it's really, chaos. it really is. It's, it's almost like a Walmart on Black Friday. <laughs> That's exactly what it's like, really. It's yeah. You got to go in if you go and find a back door. Don't go through the main entrance. Actually, I think the shuttles last year didn't they drop us off in the back? That's right. They, they did, did indeed. Yeah. So if you're coming from a hotel, you automatically get dropped at the back end, so to speak. Yeah. Yes. I'll leave that alone. The ass end of the hall. <laughs> so you have to walk through the ass end and up the no. <laughs> Can we stop this metaphor? It's really getting. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so NAB gets underway. All the exhibits open, and uh, one of our favorites, the Creative Master Series, gets underway. Monica, what's uh, what's happening this year at the Creative Master Series? Um, well, I'm going to be very sad because I won't be able to go. Uh, but, um, damn it. Um, they're going to have a session. The first session is called a Cinematography in Space for a Beautiful Planet, and it's the cinematographer talking about uh, his preparations for... Um, his collaboration with NASA um, and training as- astronauts and to shoot IMAX in space. So that actually sounds really interesting. And I don't care about cameras, but that sounds really cool because it's it, space. Yeah, that that that's something I'm going to try and get myself along to. That sounds very interesting. And you'll have to hold back your excitement, Adam. But uh, the keynote is uh, virtual reality. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> immersive storytelling meets interactive technology. Oh, there you go. Um, <laughs> Say translation, porn. <laughs> They're supposed to have some of the people behind uh, Skybound Entertainment's Gone. Is that a video game? Skybound. Oh, I have Isn't no that a idea. Video game company? Um, Fox is the Martian VR experience. So that was the Martian, the movie. They had a VR experience, I guess, that supplemented it. And a Star Wars VR experience as well. That's yeah, I'm looking forward to the Star Wars one for obvious reasons. But You don't even care that it's VR. Just the fact that it's Star Wars, you're sold. It's, well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the VR would be great, but it's like the Star Wars just gets me in the door. And I'm sure this is the, the one of their sessions. Uh, speaking of Star Wars, they're having a session about the sound of Star Wars. And, you know... A, Sound is so important for a big action movie like that, so they're gonna, they're gonna. I oh, sorry, wrong movie. He's not, he's not in <laughs> what it. Is that? That's the BK. Oh, is that what you were doing? <laughs> was that a, that was a Darth the, Vader breath? <laughs> yeah, Darth Vader breath, Bukaki. Yeah. Moving on. Uh, that's on. We Tuesday. have to mention Norm. Yes, oh. we're gonna get into that right now. Our friend uh, Norman Holland, who is the uh, head of the editing track at USC and the the inaugural chairholder. What is it again? The Michael Kahn. Endowed, Endowed chair. chair. Mm, yeah, that's a mouthful. Um, anyway, he is one of the best in the business, and every year he does a panel sponsored by the American Cinema Editors. And this year, he's talking to Hank Corwin, uh, ACE, f- who edited The Big Short, which you just saw, Ben, and really liked, right? Loved it. Absolutely loved it, yeah. Yeah, great, uh, great film, and really unconventional editing style, which made... That could have been a really boring film. I think it needed something like that to make it work. Well, it, what was really interesting was the vehicle that it used to explore, because there's an awful lot of very complicated financial mechanisms, and it's, it, it, the whole thing is about how this very complicated way of making money out of nothing. And to explain that is quite difficult, and how you put that into, into a narrative film is really tricky, but they had these brilliant little ways of, of doing that by using uh, celebrities, where it would just, yeah, with Mar- Margot Stilly in a bath, which is, uh, yeah. Yeah, there you go. Uh, it's great. Yeah, so Hank Corwin is, is will be on stage with Norman, along with Stephen Mirioni, ACE, who was the editor of The Revenant. Uh, yeah, Norman is one of the best best moderators out there when it comes to editing panels. He just he really knows how to keep them on topic, which is a problem sometimes with some some panels. But he always keeps them on topic, and he has a great way of filtering questions. Um, he makes people tweet him a question with a hashtag and then he chooses which questions and integrates them into the discussion like that's, that's a great idea it, well it's so people don't go up and say i am the biggest fan here is my life story oh wait that's I a i loved con. it <laughs> i loved it when you edited that bit in natural born killer no. <laughs> it does bypass all that we don't waste time with that so yeah, this this is a must see if you're an editor. It's uh, Tuesday morning, eleven thirty at the Creative Master Series. Usually, you can find those. I'm not even going to give the room number. You can find it. It's uh, it's in the middle. It's between. It's on the top level of the uh, South Hall, and it's kind of on that little passageway there. You'll find it. Creative Master Series. Uh, <clears throat> we get there early for all of those sessions because they fill up really fast. They do. They do. Uh, we'll be there covering them as well. We'll be live tweeting and 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 watching and learning and oh, fuck, I don't know. Just cut me out of this whole recording, please. <laughs> please, for the love of God. The last we'll, two are Jungle Book and Deadpool. And we'll be covering that event as well for uh, for Going Postal. Another one to check out Tuesday is the, uh, if you're a fan of the new Jungle Book, looks fantastic, guys, right? It looks amazing. Yeah. Absolutely incredible. And I love yeah. how they, they shot it all on a little soundstage in downtown LA. Oh, well, what the what the interesting thing about the way this was shot and why they were able to do it on a little soundstage or um, a small stage in LA is uh, they used Rob Legato designed a new virtual production process that, was, uh, um, that allowed them to do real-time digital rendering and playback. So they could kind of pl- see where the the animals were placed in the scene as they were shooting it, and they could adjust the actors accordingly. It looks like so it's a, it's a new technology. 
So they would have the the actor in front of the blue or green screen or whatever, and then right next to it a screen uh, with like real time playback, so they could see exactly. Yeah. What so on the monitors, they could kind of see where they would want to place the animals, and then they could tell the actors like, you know, adjust the actors and adjust the shot um, to what they needed it to be because they kind of knew where where all the digital uh, digital doubles would be anyway. Rob Legato, he is has worked on some of the biggest movies of all time uh, as a as a second unit director and cameraman and a visual effects supervisor. So he's one of the panelists along with the uh, film's post production supervisor, the DI colorist, and and the producer. So if you want to find out how they how they did that, if you want to find out how they did that, that's one not to miss. Uh, two forty five on Tuesday. If we're talking Creative Master Series this year, it's all about Deadpool because I know you love that film, and we will talk about that film at some point, Ben. Uh, we better, we better had you. Otherwise, it will be a, a tragic waste of the time <laughs> in my life that I had to go and sit through that piece of shit without us having to at least review it. Tell us how you reason. really feel. Oh boy, oh boy, okay. So uh, <sighs> on Tuesday, the Creative Master Series takes us to the world of Deadpool. The film was cut in Premiere Pro and uh, the film's uh, uh, post-production workflow and uh, consultant who is who we've had on this show and is a fan, Vashi Nedomansky. He was the guy that uh, got everybody together and uh, taught the editors how to use Premiere Pro on this film. If you're a Workflow fan, if you're a Premiere fan, or if you're a Deadpool fan, that would be one to check out. Tuesday, 4 p.m. at the Creative Master Series. So that brings us to Tuesday night at NAB. And what do you do on Tuesday night? Well, if you're anyone, and if you're in this business, you probably head to Super Meet. Would would I be right? And you'd be right. I'd be right. Only Um, if Ben dances, though. Well, he has to win something to dance. Well, he could still dance without winning something. I'm just I, saying. I'm gonna, it's an option. I'm going to make an... Uh, I'm going to admit something to you. I won again in Amsterdam uh, you, last year. And, you, and I never told it, you it, this. It, it, yeah, I didn't, I didn't claim the prize. <laughs> it, what was it? I don't know. It wasn't, it, it wasn't enough. It wasn't anything that I wanted badly enough to humiliate myself for, so I just kept quiet. Oh. We're telling Horton on you. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no, you, it, <laughs> so if you're not exhausted by the oh, I should mention uh, we went. Go, let's go back to Tuesday morning. Anybody want to do a 4K run at 7:30 in the morning? Fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> you actually not considered even, it last year. Not even for charity. Can I give money to charity and watch other people run? <laughs> I think you can, actually. Um, if you there watch a, other people run, that means you still have to get up and get to where they're running. Yeah, so you might as well run. Or you could walk, too. It's, uh, I'm actually thinking about doing it this year, too. It's the, the 4K for charity run uh, at the NAB show. It's at Sunset oh, 4K. Park. Right, okay, I get it. For, yeah, I could do 4K. I think he might do it and end up at the pepper mill. Oh, yeah. <laughs> But the thing is, we could turn up at the pepper mill like uh, John Travolta and Samuel L. Jackson in, you know, dressed like that, like they do when they they go into the diner (laughs) (laughs) in our our shorts and T-shirts. If you want to register for the uh, the 4K for charity, it's, uh, I don't even know how to respond to that. But yeah, I've got an outfit. (laughs) That'd be fun to do. Yeah, that'd be (laughs) So right now we're going to, so right now you've got us lined up for two outfits, right? So now that we're doing a track, the track suit, and then we're doing the VR porn outfit. Yeah. Okay. I just got a mental image. Uh. <laughs> hey, we won't have any trouble getting a table. <laughs> You've got, just got a mental image. That's what's going to greet you when you walk through that door in the hotel room when you land on Friday night, Monica. I'm going to be stretched out on the bed in that porn suit. <laughs> oh, God. Make well, sure. Don't be surprised if you find yourself with a shaved ass. <laughs> <laughs> I normally have to pay for that, so bring it on. Well, it is Vegas too, so I think they offer that at our hotel. We are so far off topic, we are in another star system. If you want to donate, you can do a donation to join the race, or you can actually donate and don't run, anywhere from 10 to uh, $50. And you get a cute little medal and a, a T-shirt. The website is athletepath.com, and then look for the, uh, the 4K for charity run. So moving on to Wednesday, NAB, and in case you had nothing to do over the last few days, something we hadn't mentioned yet was post-production world. That starts from Saturday, goes right through to Wednesday? 
Yes. Wednesday. Which is full of amazing. So the first two, I, first two years I was at NAB, I was there purely to do PPW. So that's um, an amazing set of sessions which run all day, every day, from nine until about six. And there's about, I don't know, 12, 15 things going on concurrently. Yeah, everything from uh, like color grading, uh, editing, like business side of things as well, social media. You're doing a cool all day workshop, right? You're teaching. <laughs> Well, I'm kind of assisting, but yeah, there's um, Jem Schofield, who I've worked with a few times from the C47s, doing a cinematic um, lighting field trip. So we've got a couple of suites uh, in a hotel and some actors, and uh, we're going to run different lighting setups throughout the whole day. So we did it last year, um, which was part of the main uh, PPW program, so it's stepping it up a notch this time. It's going to be hugely exciting, and uh, I would say you should get yourself booked on, but sadly, it's already sold out. Hold on a sec. It's a field trip, but there's, yeah. no, bu there's no bus. There's I think there might be a bus. There's a bus, and you're going to a hotel room? Yeah, we've got two so it's suites. indoors, then. Okay. So it's, it's a field trip, isn't it? It's away from the convention center. So there's, we, we've got a huge amount of really high-end lighting fixtures, a huge amount of, of modifiers, lo just loads of brilliant toys to play with through the whole day and um, we're going to just go through loads and loads of different lighting setups using our actors which is great and having the two actors last year was fantastic so just really all being stepped up a notch for this year it's going to be a good good day is there a wait list for this if people want to get on the wait list in case there's a cancellation or something i don't know have a look on the uh, the PPW pages and see if there, there is a way of, of getting on a waiting list because it, it really is an amazing session. And you don't have to be working um, in, in narrative for this. Obviously, that's the, 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 the kind of base of this. But these is, are all techniques that you can use in, in everything. You can use this stuff in corporate stuff. I use this, these techniques for doing corporate. It's massively useful skills that you, you gain doing that. It is called the Cinematic Lighting Field Workshop, and it's running on Sunday from 8 a.m. till 6. And you can catch Ben, and he'll sign your autograph, he'll sign your whatever. I'll sign anything. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's going to go, well, Tom Jones on you and throw their panties. Oh, Tom Jones is playing in the town near me in the Czech Republic in, in July. I'm going to go for my birthday treat. You're going to throw your panties at him. Might take a... Tom Jones, huh? you're such an old man. Tom Jones is amazing. What you want to wear? Tom Jones is a classic, Monica. Uh -huh. He transcends age. Hold on, we're talking to a millennial here. Uh -huh. Really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, Children, please. honestly, fucking children. <laughs> I don't get it. I'm not even uh, a millennial. I don't even know what a millennial is. What year were you born? 80. You're on the tail... Okay, so actually you're on the tail end she of Generation X. So you're full of crap. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were younger than that. You're older than I, I thought you were younger than that. Yeah, you're only two years younger than us. How long have you guys known me? We've had this discussion already. I know, but you just seem older. <laughs> you, wait, what? <laughs> Are you younger? Younger, sorry. <sighs> yeah, younger. Yeah, you just, seem, you just seem younger than that. Take it as a compliment. I, yeah. I get it every he's, other he's, week, he's, so. defi he's, he's definitely not saying you're immature. He's not saying that at all. No, it's definitely no. not what he's uh -huh. saying. Don't read that into it. Look, he's just because I'm wearing a he's shirt that says professional that. fangirl on it right now doesn't mean anything. The biggest question that, that, that's on the tips of everybody's lips, what boots are you wearing, Monica, to the NAB I actually show? was trying to think of what I was going to pack. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know yet. We will see. I do have new Doc Martens, but they're not sparkly, but they do have ribbons for laces. There you go. But, um, oh, back to post-production world. Yeah, let's go back to post-production world. We're going to talk about your bloody um, boots. You brought it up. I know. Um, uh, something new this year, which I thought is really cool, is they have something called Post-Production World University, uh, which is skills for students and recent graduates. So, because um, a lot of their sessions are really, really advanced meant for people who are already experienced in their fields and, you know, trying to get it to that next level. But for people who are just starting out or a little new to this, this career, um, they have a whole track just for them. Yeah, it looks really good as well. So it's all kinds of um, sessions based on um, boosting your career and getting yourself on the first rung of the ladder, isn't it? Yeah, there's even a session called, taught by Richard Harrington, 
uh, called You're Hired, How to Not Screw Up a Job Interview, which um, that's, uh, that's, I, I'd actually want to go to that just to see what he would say. Is this coming from a corporate sense? Is this a TV sense? Is this a film sense? I don't. I think a lot of it is um, could just because it's meant for people trying to figure out where they want to go. So a lot of it could you know cross whichever area you want to work in. For example, there's um, there's one called uh, the skills I wish I had learned early in my career, being taught by Scott Simmons. And he's he's just gonna go you know things we learn with experience. He's going to tell these, you know, younger people what they are, and that that could be useful just just in life, just learning from. <laughs> it's basically wisdom, stuff you wish you knew when you were younger. I mean, that's that's universal. So, to find out more about what uh, the grid, what's happening at post production world, I think you can still register for that. I don't, there's no way this could be sold out because there's so much going on. You could uh, you could probably even register. No, 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 you can turn up. I think there's an an. I think if you have a little scrat around on the internet, you can find some discount codes for that as well. I can't remember. I think it's about, a, is it, what is it, about $1,000, something like that for BBW? It usually runs around there. And I think it, you know, it changes, you know, there's like early bird pricing and so, yeah, but I mean, we're, we're if you have a little on it. We are, but if you have a little scout around, um, you can normally find a, a, a 10% off code somewhere. And I think it's money well spent if you take advantage of it. And that's it. If you're a freelancer, it's all tax deductible. Yeah, absolutely. I would say of all the money I've spent on kit and cameras and lights and computers, the money I've spent on PPW has been more beneficial to me and my work than any other money I've spent, really. It's worth doing. So postproductionworld.com to find out more information. There's so many courses, we just, we're just not going to go into them right now. Just uh, get, it, get in there and, and learn and have fun. Oh, and if you go to PPW, make sure you take a, a jumper or a sweater or whatever you call them there. Uh, they, oh, um, you're going to take a jumper. Yeah. It's, it's, the, it's the weirdest thing because it's like 30, uh, again, 30 degrees C, whatever that is in Fahrenheit. It's hot outside. It's Vegas. It's the middle of... The desert, well, it's hold warm. on. It, well, I, I just know saw it a picture. It, it flooded two days ago out there. Yeah, that's it, true. It, but it, I looked at it. Was a real again. thing? It, f- yeah, yeah. it flooded the other day out there. So I don't know. The forecast's great for next week, though. It's going to be, it's going to be hot. So you're going to need take a bag, put a sweater or whatever you call them in the in the bag because as soon as you go into the conference rooms where all the teaching stuff happens, it's set to like Arctic winter. It's freezing. And so on that note, that brings us to the end of Going Postal. That's pretty much what's happening at NAB Show. If, uh, if we've missed anything, let us know. Drop us a line at Going Postal Show. Uh, or you can uh, contact us on Twitter. Ben, how can they find you on Twitter? Uh, Snapper78. 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 Monica? Uh, just Monica underscore edits. And you can catch me at Going Postal Adam. So until the show floor, we will catch you later. Have a great NAB show if you're heading out. Stay warm if you're inside and stay cool if you're outside. Watch out for nipple chafing. Uh. <laughs> and, 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 and find out, before you put on any virtual reality headset, find out what's playing on it first. You, might, you don't want to get a nasty surprise. Yes. There's going to be a lot of like eye diseases being passed along to everyone with those headsets. Oh. It's going to be an epidemic of pink eye. That's what it is. Bring your own wipes and Purell. So if you're going to put on a headset, wipe it first. That goes for a lot of things in Vegas. Yes. (laughs) Pretty much just wear gloves the whole time. Yeah. Disinfectant and rubber coating on as much of your body as you can get it over. It'll be, yeah. Just wear a white rubber suit. So until the NAB show, we'll catch you later. This is Adam and this is Going Postal. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.